I'd like to welcome everyone to today's American Dairy and Nor Association Northeast virtual farm tour that's going to be hosted by Dutch Hollow Farms and Farmer Nate. And as we can see, Farmer Nate is out in the barn with the ladies ready to go. So take it away, Farmer Nate. Good morning, everybody. I'm glad you could make it here. Uh, so this is my family's farm. Dutch Hollow Farm is its name. Uh, my parents started here. They both got married and left their grandparents, my grandparents' farms 40 years ago. And we've been here since 1976. Uh, we farm here with my, I farm here with my two older brothers and my parents still today. Uh, and actually now my oldest nieces and nephews are all finishing up college and they're starting to come home and, and, and be here on the farm. So here on the farm, we have about 800 adult Jersey cows. Jersey cows are these brown ones that you see. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen the black and white cows that other farms might have. Those are called Holsteins. They're just like different breeds of dogs. We have different types of cows too. So Jerseys are known to make a lot more fat and protein in their milk, which means that their milk is really good for making all the other types of dairy products like cheese and butter and yogurt and ice cream, all those other things that are made with milk. So here on the farm here, uh, we milk our cows three times a day. And a Jersey she's our, on our farm is going to make about six to eight gallons of milk every single day. You guys should know what a gallon is. It's that big jug that you probably have at home in your refrigerator. <clears throat> so they get milk three times a day. So we start real early in the morning, about three o'clock in the morning, we're setting up our milking parlor to start milking our cows. And we're milking almost all day long in three shifts. So people are here early in the morning taking care of our cows. And then there's some people here late at night taking care of the cows. This barn we're in right now, these cows actually don't get milked at all. They're on vacation. This is what we call a dry cow barn. Every single cow you see in this barn is pregnant and about to have a baby sometime in the next three weeks. We average two to three babies born every single day. So nothing's happening right now behind me, but it could happen anytime. This barn is located right next to our milking parlor. So somebody is walking through here once an hour, just checking on these ladies to make sure that nobody's having a baby that doesn't need help. So you can see in front of them, they just got fed their breakfast here not too long ago. And I call it breakfast, but this is the food they're going to eat the entire day. What you see in front of them is how much food each one of these girls is going to eat in one day. So tomorrow morning, before they get fed a second time or another time, we're going to clean up all the old feed and weigh it to see how much they didn't finish and then, and then refeed them to make sure they get exactly what they need, but not too much to waste. So that doesn't look like the type of food that you guys probably eat, I'm going to guess, you know. It's kind of like a salad. You saw the truck, if that, those of you that logged in early that, that unloaded it. Think of that like a giant mixing bowl. So with, with the mixing bowl, we have all the ingredients that got to go into it. So if you look down in there, you can see all the ingredients are mixed together. So we're going to see what the ingredients are right now. The biggest one that you see in this feed is going to be corn silage. If you look at this, you guys have probably seen what a, a stalk of corn looks like when it's growing out in the field all spring and summer and fall. Well, as it gets to the fall and that corn stalk is fully grown on the farm, we chop that up. We put it through a giant machine that chops it up into these little bits, the entire plant. You can see some corn kernels that have been smashed, but you also see the corn stalk and the leaves. And they're chopped up into these little pieces and that gets put into a silo where we store it all year long. Because in the winter time, we're here in New York, there isn't a whole lot of stuff growing out there, right? I mean, it's almost April right now. And we don't have any green grass yet. So there is nothing for our cows to eat. So we have to make the feed in the spring and summertime that we're gonna feed all year round. Another ingredient you're gonna see here is what we call haylage. So this is just like, if you imagine going out and mowing the lawn and collecting all that grass and bringing it back in and putting it into a pile and then covering it, this is what you'd get. Except we have a lot bigger lawn, right? We have all different types of, of hay plants, grasses and legumes. So we have alfalfa and orchard grass and timothy and brome, all these different types of grasses that grow all across the Northeast pretty naturally. And we have giant hay fields and we chop it all down and, and then we put it into our silo to store it for, year, for all year round. Another thing we do with our corn is we make corn meal. 
So just like you guys, if you've ever had cornbread or corn muffins, you may have cornmeal, which is flour that's been made out of grinding just the kernels of the corn. Well, when we're done chopping just the plants of the corn, we still have corn left over. And we take those kernels and we grind them up too. So this is a lot of energy for those girls. And our last ingredient is soybean meal. So here we can also grow soybeans. And we take that and we can chop that up and grind it up and feed that to the cows too. And this gives them protein because they need a lot of protein for their muscles and bones, just like you and I do. We get our protein from dairy products. They get theirs from the plants. So you look um, at how much. Yes. We did have a question come in, Nate, or a couple people that asked this question. How much do they eat a day? How much do they eat a day? That's a good question. So all that stuff you just saw right there, with the exception of probably the cornmeal and the soybeans, I don't think any of you guys are going to go outside and eat your lawn, right? You're not going to be able to eat, eat and, and grow big and strong by eating all the things that are growing out there that, that the cows can eat. So if you really think about it, this garbage can right here is about the size of a full-grown cow's stomach. And we fill that thing up every single day. And I like using a garbage can because our cows are taking things that you and I cannot eat. It's stuff that would go into a garbage can or go into a landfill and be wasted. And they can go and they can eat that and turn it into milk. Right down to like, if you had orange juice this morning, all the orange pulp and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the orange peels, they can get ground up and fed to cows. If you had almonds or peanuts, the, the actual shells from those nuts that you and I don't eat, cows can eat them. They can take everything that we can't eat and turn it into milk. How awesome is that? But as you can imagine, eating all this stuff probably makes you a little thirsty. So they got to drink a lot of water. So this is 15 gallons of water right here. And that's probably what one of these cows drinks. One of our cows that's making milk is probably going to drink two, three, or maybe even four of these. Awesome. We had a couple of questions also come in about the ear tags. Can you explain to us what those yellow things in their okay. ears are and, and do they hurt? Hey, what's your name? What's your name? She can't tell me her name. We need to know who these cows are. So we put ear tags in them because they can't tell us their names. And it's very important for us to know who each and every cow is. So not only do we know how to find them if we need to, to check on them, but we can keep track of what kind of vaccines they might have had in the past to make sure that we keep them healthy. We have to keep records on them. Just like you guys in school, you have that report card, right? You need to have that report card going to the right kid at home so we know how you're doing, right? So your mom and dad, they know that you're doing well in school. We have to be able to keep track of that. So that's what this number's for. And that number, that tag is actually a handwritten tag because her first tag, she actually, uh, she lost it. It fell out. And it's just like getting your ears pierced. It's one little poke. It doesn't hardly hurt at all. <laughs> I forgot to add one of my favorite ingredients. So this is what we call hay, right? You saw the haylage, which is when it's chopped up wet. This is when we feed it dry. So we made bales of hay. And I'm looking at this cow right here, 553. Hello, Willa. Would you like, oh, you know, you're supposed to ask first. I think some of her friends would also like some hay. Here you go, girls. They really like to eat the hay when I sprinkle it on top. But imagine how thirsty that'd make you trying to eat that. Oh, and Melissa wanted some. So our cows have names here on the farm, but they also have those numbers. And those numbers are how we keep track of each and every cow, how much milk they're making, how many calves they've had, how old they are. It's just how we keep track of them so we can find them in the barns and know where they're supposed to be. Awesome. We've got a lot of questions about how old are the cows, how long do they live, and how old do they have to be to have a baby? So kind of all about okay. age. So uh, we'll go right back here. So Willa here is just probably about four and a half years old. She is going to be having her third calf very soon. Right next to her is Melissa. She isn't even two years old yet. She's going to be two years old, I think in June, and she is about to have her first calf. So cows grow very quickly. They go from being a calf to being old enough to get pregnant within about within a year. So, and then they're pregnant, they're for pregnant for about nine months, just like a person. You know, when a, when a human gets pregnant, they have that baby inside them for nine months and then the baby's born. Cows are almost exactly the same, nine months. 
So most of our animals, our cows, are, are having their first baby by the time they're 22 to 24 months old. But you can see, they can grow really fast. So even that one that's only two years old, she's almost the same size as Willa here. They're all done growing by the time they're four years old. You can see Willa didn't get any taller, but she's gotten a little bit wider. Her body's filled out. She's done growing. And in this barn, you can see uh, all these cows are all different ages. Some are having their first calf, some are having their second calf, some in the back are having their seventh or eighth calf. They have a calf about once a year on average. So they milk, they, they're in the, in the parlor and in the, in the barn where they get milked for about 10 months and then they come over here on vacation for about two months. So just like when moms and dads have to take off from work because they have a newborn baby, our cows have a vacation too. So when they're in this barn, we don't milk them. We just let them have a vacation. They relax. They just are as comfortable as can be because we won't, don't want them to be stressed out at all before they have their baby. And then after they have their calf is when they go back to work because their job is to make milk. Cows can live, oh, they live just about as long as a really big dog does. If, you, if any of you guys have dogs at home as a pet, you know that those big dogs, they'll live eight, 10 years old and they start to get older and crampy and, and, they, and sometimes they just don't have a very good life anymore. It's the same thing with cows. Look how big they are. They don't live as long as humans do because they're, they, they're, they're just different. So if we look in the back here, we can see some of the ladies are just, they said, nah, we're not that hungry. We've had food to eat all day long. We'll go and eat later. They're right now, they're just relaxing. They are nine months pregnant. They have great big babies inside them. That cow with a big white spot on her head, that's Henrietta. That belongs to my son, Zachary. He's hoping she has a baby girl any day now. So this area is designed to give those cows lots of space to spread out and stay comfortable. And if we see one that's ready to have a baby, what we'll do is we can move her into the back. We have these special stalls in the back that are kind of like privacy rooms for them. That way they can have privacy so the other moms-to-be don't bother them. And if we need to help them have their baby, we can do it. Usually they can do it all on their own. So you can see I'm wearing a hooded sweatshirt still. It's almost springtime, but not quite. Cows are comfortable in this weather. This is perfect weather for a cow but it's a little cold for a baby calf. So I'm coming back in here to where our labor delivery room is and I got a surprise for you guys. We had a baby born last night. So inside this blue box right here, is an this is an incubator. So in the winter time, we have the baby calves when they're born, after their mommy licks them off, we need to make sure they stay warm and get dried out because it's cold out. Imagine how cold it was in January when it was snowing and everything else outside. So these incubators are designed to get them all dry and fluffed out and warm. So let's see what we got in here. Good morning, look at you. Whoa. So this little guy was born about midnight and he spent the night in there and he's all ready to go. Look at him. He is not even 12 hours old and he is just ready to take on the world. How about that, huh? So now we're done well, over here in the barn, we're gonna move on to the baby calf barn where we can see where the baby calves go, which is like our nursery, okay? Awesome. I think so, is gonna show us our milking parlor. Yeah, so while Nate walks over to the calf barn where they keep all the calves, um, we're gonna show a quick recorded video of the milking parlor. The cell service isn't very good in the milking parlor, so we made a nice pre-recorded video for you all to watch about the milking process. So here we are in the milking parlor at Dutch Hollow Farm. You can see that the cows have all come in. This is what we call a pedometer. This tag is attached on every single cow's leg. It communicates with an antenna so we can track all of the data that these cows have and make sure that we can, first of all, know how much milk they're making, but also know that our cows are doing well. We can determine how healthy they are and whether they're feeling good just through that pedometer. So when we're milking our cows, we always wear latex or nitrile gloves because there's lots of germs that can be in the cracks and crevices on our hands. And we don't want to spread anything from one cow to the other or from ourselves. So the first thing we need to do is make sure our cow is nice and relaxed and ready to give milk. So we're going to come in here and we're just going to massage her udder a little bit and clean off any of the sawdust that she got on herself 
while she was laying down in her stall. We're next gonna come in with a special soap. Now, believe it or not, you don't use lots of water to get a cow's teats clean. Think of this like Purell, that hand sanitizer that we all use to disinfect our hands before we eat. Water doesn't kill germs, soap does. So we put on this special soap and it's a foam so we can see everywhere it is. And it's orange like that because it has iodine in it, which kills germs. So after that soap's been on there for 15 or 20 seconds, we know it's done its job. And now we're gonna check to make sure that the milk is nice and clean and that the cow feels well. If our cows don't feel well and they're not making good milk, we don't wanna put that milk into our tank. Once she's had about a total of 60 seconds from the time I first touched her, that machine is gonna be ready to go on. We use microfiber towels to, to clean off our cows instead of paper towels. So here we go, we're gonna hit the button. Now this is just a gentle vacuum, less than probably your vacuum cleaner at home, so it doesn't hurt the cow at all. So after we put the milking machine on, we should see the milk coming out right away. And as we can look up on the keypad, we can already see that she gave half a pound of milk already. The milk's gonna come out of our cow, through the milk hose, and down into a stainless steel line where it's gonna go to our milk tank and be cooled down. This entire process is only gonna take about four and a half to five minutes for this cow to get milked. Now our cows here get milked three times a day. So by looking right up on here and pushing two buttons, I can tell you that the computer expects that she's going to make 16.2 pounds of milk this session, which is about two gallons. So she's probably making six gallons of milk a day. So for those of you that don't know, there's about 8.6 pounds of milk for every gallon. Our entire farm, if you averaged it out, every cow on this farm makes between seven and eight gallons of milk a day. Our computer knows when our cow is almost done milking. It doesn't try to suck every last drop of milk out of her. It doesn't want to over milk her. So once she makes less than a half a pound of milk in 30 seconds, the machine comes off all by itself. So the machine decided she was done. So now that she's done, the opening at the end of her teat is all nice and relaxed. And we don't want bacteria to get up in there and, and harm her. So until that muscle tightens back up, we're gonna put on a special lotion that's gonna protect her. Now once again, that has iodine in it, which will kill any germs, but it's nice and slippery but sticky like a lotion, so it keeps her skin soft, so it doesn't get brittle and hard. Once the rest of her friends are done milking, they'll all leave together and go back to the barn. So after the milk comes out of the cows and goes through the pipeline, it comes into here, which is our milk house. And inside this giant steel tank, is all the milk coming out of the cows. We want to get that milk as cold as possible, as fast as possible. So from here, the milk is going to get pumped through these pipelines and through what we call a chiller. So as the milk is coming out of the, out of the tank and, and brought over to, or pushed over to the tanks, it first has to go through a filter. This filter will not let anything solid through. So what, and every last drop of milk has to pass through a filter just like this before it can get into our milk tank. So this tank right here is where we're currently milking into. It was empty when we started, and the temperatures at it inside that tank is down at 57 degrees. So that milk is being cooled as it goes in. If we look at the tank from this morning's milking, and we look at the temperature gauge on it, we can see that this milk is actually at a nice cool 37 degrees. We keep the milk cold here on the farm until it gets picked up by the milk truck to go to where it's gonna be processed into the dairy products. Awesome. So now we're going to hand it back off to Farmer Nate, who's in their calf farm where they raise all their baby calves. Okay, so you guys saw where the baby calves were born. This is like our nursery. So when that baby calf is born, we got to feed her milk as soon as possible. The special milk that her mom makes, it's called colostrum. It's filled with all the antibodies, all the things that their body needs to fight off diseases. Without them, they can get sick real easy. Look how big this bottle is. That's huge, it's like half a gallon right there. These babies, before they're even half an hour old, are gonna drink an entire bottle of milk. I feed them by hand with a bottle because I wanna know exactly how much milk they got and I wanna make sure the milk that they got is super high quality to build up their immune system so they don't get sick. But what I do is I milk their mommies in the parlor and collect that milk and test it and feed it to the next heifer calf that's born. 
So once they're a couple of days old, like these girls, you can see they're pretty bright and shiny and ready to go, right? They're thinking it's lunchtime already because I'm in here playing with them. It's not lunchtime yet. You just had breakfast a couple hours ago. You got to wait a little while. We feed them by hand with those bottles three times a day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now you can also see, like I was saying, this is perfect weather for a cow, but it's still a little bit cold out for a baby. So we give them these special jackets. It's just like a windbreaker. You know, this weather is just like you guys probably want to get, go out and play outside for recess and your mom keeps yelling at you to put your jacket on. Well, in this calf barn, I'm mom and I tell them they got to keep their jackets on until it gets warmer. But once it does get a little warmer and they get a little bigger and a little older, we can take those jackets off. Now let's look at their pen itself. We bet it was straw to make so they can make a nice little nest, just like you can burrow into your covers or under the blankets when it's cold out and keep yourself warm, that's what they can do. They sleep in there and they just get nestled in there and make a little nest to stay warm. We use wood shavings, sawdust, to keep them dry in there. Our baby calves need to stay dry and they need to stay out of the cold breezes and they have to have plenty to eat and drink. They have water in front of them all the time in case they get thirsty through the day. And in addition to milk, they get their cereal, right? If you know a little baby, Babies don't drink, you know, at home, a human baby, they can only eat milk and maybe like some, so this girl right here, even a week old, now she's about, yeah, she's a week old, and she can eat the cereal a little bit. She doesn't really think about uh, much. She says hey, Farmer that's enough for her. But by Harmony, the time she's a month old, uh, she's going to start eating more things. Yes. Your your connection's getting breaking a little up. spotty. Yeah, a little breaking up okay. a little bit right I, there. Also. I, I like cuddling the calves too much. Every time I bend over to cuddle the calves, I think I lose reception. Yeah, that's what it uh, is. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. good okay. now. I just, yeah. I, it's hard not to cuddle calves. I hope you guys realize that. <laughs> <laughs> so even though the farm makes lots and lots of milk, we actually don't feed that milk back to our babies. We actually use baby formula, just like mommies and daddies might do at home. So this powder right here, we add hot water and we can make the milk that we feed our babies. It smells like vanilla pudding, it's delicious. I kind of want to eat it. And the reason we do that is because I need to have this milk at the perfect temperature to feed these babies. If it's too warm, they won't want to eat it. And if it's too cold, they won't want to eat it. And it can give them upset tummies. So by doing this with powder, I can give them the same exact meal every single time at the perfect temperature because it's very important that we do not change what we feed our babies. They need to have consistency. They need to have the same thing every time. They're not like you and I where like sometimes it's Taco Tuesday or sometimes it's Pizza Friday. Like we want to have a different meal every day. Calves are completely different. They don't want anything different. They want the same. It's not lunchtime yet. I've got her really excited. <laughs> So these baby calves are going to eat and grow and grow and grow. You saw how big those, those cows are that are only two years old. So when they're born, they're probably 60 pounds, probably about the same as most of you second graders. That's how big they are. And they're going to gain two pounds a day. And by the time they're eight weeks old, they're eating their cereal. They're starting to eat some of that dry hay and they're drinking lots and lots of water that I can start to take the milk away from them. I feed them less milk so they eat more grain and more water because their stomachs are growing and changing so they can eat all the food that grown-ups cows eat. So that, that's what we call weaning and we take the milk away from them slowly so they don't get mad at us. We and did have a that, question they just, come in about a couple questions. Why can't they just drink milk from their moms and why do you separate them from the cows? Okay, well, so I wasn't able to show you a brand new baby calf this morning. That one was already 12 hours old and ready to walk around. A brand new baby calf can't stand up for a little while. And it is super important that we get that colostrum into them as fast as possible. And when I warm up a bottle of colostrum that I have in my refrigerator, I can have that baby calf fed before she's even a half hour old. If I wait for her to be strong enough to stand up and nurse off her mommy, it could be a couple hours. And I have no guarantee that mommy has made any milk. Sometimes the mommies don't make any milk. They have their baby and they don't have any milk in the rudder to feed them. So if we had a baby that had to drink milk off of that mommy and she didn't get that meal, she's probably going to get sick. And that's going to make my job really hard to keep her healthy and growing. 
my job is to make sure every single baby calf in here has a great start. She's super healthy and super happy. And I have found that the best way to do that is for me to feed them with a bottle because I can do it much quicker. Thank you. So, yep, you see, so we're showing on the camera all these older ones here. We got some, these girls over here, they're about a month old. They're start. you can see how bigger, how much bigger they're getting. And they're still ready to eat meals. And some of them are getting their jackets taken off now. We take their jackets off once they're a month old because I want their bodies to learn how to adapt to the, to the colder weather. So now she's going to, for the next couple of weeks, she's, she's big enough that she's okay with the colder weather, but she's also going to grow her hair and she's just going to learn to adapt to, to the weather a little better. Because once they get much older, they don't wear jackets at all. So most of my day is in here in this barn playing with these calves. I mean, taking care of these calves. I don't play. I, I <laughs> work very hard. But it feel, it's a lot of fun, as you guys can imagine. Awesome. So we have about four minutes left to the initial tour. So we're going to launch into some specific Q&A time. Um, and we might actually even have a little extra uh, time with Farmer Nate today for questions. Okay. We have a lot of great questions. So I'll get that. I love uh, answering questions. Kicked off. Do cows play? Well, you can see some of these calves, they really like it when I come up and scratch their heads, don't you? And, and sometimes they do run around and kick up their heels and they, they like to burn off some energy. So they, yeah, they do play. And the way our barns are built, we need to give them space to play. You know, that was one of the things I need to hit on here. If you think about it, when a baby is a human is, is born in the hospital, it's with mom and the doctor in that hospital room. And then it goes to a special nursery where it's in a special crib all by itself. And then when they go home, where does that baby sleep? It sleeps in a crib, in a special safe place. Well, that's what these are. These are our baby's cribs. This pen is more than enough for that calf to turn around and jump around and play, but it's also giving her her own private space so she never has to worry about being squished by somebody. This is her, this is her private, private area that she doesn't have to share. Awesome. Once they get bigger, we'll put them in pens together because they gotta learn how to play with each other. Um, if you could take a step back to where you were before, the connection is a little better over there. <laughs> um, okay. Yep. Just stop and, playing with the calf is what you're telling uh, me. Yeah, sadly, you can't play with the calf. Um, we're getting a lot of questions about um, boy calves versus girl calves. Do you have any boys? And how do you have babies on the farm? Okay. So boy calves and girl calves. That's a good question. So believe it or not, this should make sense to everybody. Half of the babies born on this farm are going to be boys, what we call bulls. And the other half are going to be girls, what we call heifers. And only the girls are going to grow up to become cows because they have udders to make milk. Boy cows, bulls do not make milk. No matter how much I cuddle them and feed them and grow them, they will never grow an udder and make milk. But they will become a big, mean bull someday. So while our bull calves are young, for the first couple of days, we take care of them here just like all the rest of the calves but then somebody else is going to buy them and they're going to take them to, a, to their farm. You know, and as you guys realize it, there's lots of other things that cows can do besides make milk, right? I mean, I love cheeseburgers. I love steak. This is part of what we do, right? We raise these animals in, a, in the best way we can and care for them, but we know that at some point they're going to also be food for us in a different way, right? It's our job to take care of them until that time. We had a question come in. How do you do everything? <laughs> How do we? Well, I'm not here by myself. There are a lot of animals here. Yeah. When I told you there was 800 cows, well, there's also 750 young animals, babies all the way up to just about ready to have their babies. So there is more than 1,500 animals on our farm when you put it all together. So in addition to myself and my niece and my two older brothers and my mom and my dad, we have six people whose job, they're not part of the family, but they work here and they, they come here to work every single day, just like your mom and dad go to work somewhere else and their job is to take care of our cows. And then we have three or four other people whose job it is to run in the equipment, growing the crops, feeding the cows, all the machinery that we get to run. We have people that that's their job. So when it's all said and done, we have 15 to 16 different households here in the country who depend on this farm for the, to make a living. It's hard to find jobs out in the country. 
You know, when you live in the city, there's lots of places to go to work. Out in the country, it's not the same. And farms are one of the places that people can find a job and go to work. Awesome. Um, so we are at 1030. So if anyone does need to leave um, and do the rest of their school day, feel free to jump off. But we still have a lot of great questions. So if you have a little bit of time, we're actually going to stay on extra with Farmer Nate and continue to answer some questions. So feel free to stay on if you can. If you can't, thanks for joining. You will get a nice follow-up email with the recording and a link to our survey. And thanks for joining us. Um, Thank you, guys. So we got a lot of questions about other animals. Do you have any other animals on the farm? Other animals. Are, do, are you just a dairy <laughs> Well, when I grew up, all we had was cows and we had a couple sheep and we had a miniature pony. And today we have mostly cows, but we have a couple sheep and we have a miniature pony. But the cows, the cows are the ones that, that we use that as, our, as our job. The sheep, they're kind of just a hobby. We have them as pets. And we have the miniature pony because my daughter and my, grand, and my dad both like horses. So we do have some other animals around, but they're in some other barns, but they're not part of the farm. They're not, they're not part of the job that we do. You know, we don't milk the sheep. The sheep are, are they actually grow wool. If everybody knows that you can make, you can use the, the fiber that grows on a sheep, that their hair is called wool, and we can make clothes out of it, socks and sweaters and hats and things like that. So those sheep, they grow this big, beautiful wool that we can turn into things. And the horse, She's too small to ride unless you're a little kid. And so she mostly just hangs out, eats hay, and, and gets to get cuddled. Okay. We're getting a lot of questions about what you produce. So there was a question, do you pasteurize the milk? Where does the milk go to okay. be processed? And how do you make cheese? There's just a lot of questions about processing. So can you tell, <laughs> it, can you tell us what happens to your milk after it leaves the farm? Sure. So you guys saw that video, and you saw those big tanks. Well. Every single day, and actually twice a day, a big tractor trailer comes to our farm and picks up our milk. And in the morning, the truck that picks up our milk goes right over the border into Massachusetts, and it goes to what we call a creamery, a place that takes milk and turns it into other dairy products. And in that uh, creamery that, the, that this truck goes to, it bottles it for milk that you drink. And it has a big old Jersey cow on its label because their label says they use only Jersey cows. And so that's where about half of our milk goes every single day. And then every afternoon, another truck comes and takes a, a tractor trailer load of milk and it takes it down to New York City. Every single night, in the middle of the night, that tractor trailer pulls into the city and it unloads its milk right in Manhattan at a cheese plant. There is a cheese, a place that makes cheese right in the middle of New York City. They take our milk and turn it into cheese. So when the milk leaves our farm, it is not pasteurized yet. The places that turn it into dairy products do the pasteurization. So our, that's why our, it's important that our milk has to leave within 48 hours of being milked from the cow. It has to get turned into something that we can use. So that cheese plant down in the city is called Beecher's Cheese. And the rest of our milk, as you can see by my hat, I'm part of a co-op called Agrimark. And Agrimark takes all the dairy products from 900 farms all throughout New York and New England, Vermont, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts. We all work together, all of us farms, we work together and we take all of our milk and we turn it into beautiful dairy products like Cabot cheese. If you know the brand name Cabot, you are probably having milk from my cows and all of my neighbors and family friends or butter or whipped cream or sour cream or yogurt or cottage cheese. I could go on and on, lots of dairy products, right? Awesome. We're getting a lot of questions about size and height from the time that they're babies to the time they're full grown. So can you just talk about how they grow and how small they are and how big they get? Okay. So our average calf here is born probably weighs between 55 and 60 pounds. Now a Holstein, those black and white ones, they're much bigger. They probably are about 85 pounds. They're like a fourth grader. They're big. And they're going to grow two pounds a day. So by the time they're two months old, they have probably doubled in size. And by the time they're four months old, they've doubled again. Because they're going to keep on growing, gaining two pounds a day until they're about a year old. And then they're going to probably gain a pound and a half to a pound a day. 
So by the time our cows, our Jersey cows that I'm more familiar with are fully grown, they're weighing anywhere from 800 to 1,000 pounds. And those big black and white Holstein cows, they're weighing 1,300, 1,300, all the way up to 1,500 pounds. Some of them can get as big as 1,700, big, big cows. Awesome. We had a question, how many teeth do they have? How many teeth do they have? So I can't bend over and show you because it'll make this go static. But if I could get a calf to smile, here, let's see if we can get her to smile at us. You can see she's got buck teeth on the bottom maybe, but she's got no teeth on top. So a calf is born with all her teeth. She has 32 total teeth. She has six molars on the back of each side, six molars on the top and the back on each side, and then eight across the front. So 32 teeth total. But the top of her mouth up in front, there isn't any teeth at all. It's just like a hard piece of sandpaper. Because if you saw all the things they eat, they don't have to like chew it like we do, like bite pieces off. Everything's already into bite sizes for them, but they got to grind it up. So that those teeth just kind of grind all their food up. And then they've got those big long tongues that you can see, and that's what they use to grab all everything. We had a question, why did you become a farmer? Why did I become a farmer? Well, I was super lucky and got to be born on a farm. My mom grew up on a farm and my dad grew up on a farm and both of their grandparents grew up on farms, both of their grandfathers. So I grew up every single day when I got home from kindergarten, I got off the school bus, changed out of my school clothes, put back on my barn clothes and I came out to the farm to play with calves. And I actually ha I helped out taking care of the baby calves when I was little. And as I got bigger, I got more jobs to do. Just like you guys have, might have chores around the house, I had chores around the farm. So by the time I was in high school and getting older and going on to college, I had been working as a job here on my family farm. I went off to college and I really wasn't sure what I, want, what I wanted to do, but I knew I loved working on the farm. And by the time I was at college for about a year, I realized that I really missed being home on the farm. So the next three years of college flew by because I wanted to be back home working with my animals, working with my family, getting to see my nieces and nephews get off the school bus every single day. And now I'm super excited because my own kids, they get off the school bus here at their grandmother's house every single day and can run out here and see me at work and come see their calves. And they can almost be playing here on the farm while I'm working. It's, it's my favorite part of my life is being awesome. able to be with my family every day. We're getting a lot of questions about cows' personalities. Do they ever fight? Is there a dominant cow? Oh, you better believe it. They do sometimes scrap. When we first put the animals together in groups, they kind of have to learn how to behave with each other. Just like your first day of preschool or kindergarten, you start to learn which, which kids are your friends and which kids you know, might be the troublemakers. I don't think there's any troublemakers in, their, in your classes, though. I'm sure you guys are all awesome. But there are some cows that like to be bullies. They need to be the boss. They're the one that's always taking charge. So when they first go into a group, even when they're adults, if they go, when those, when those new mommies, when they go over into back into the barn with the other cows that are making milk, they, they're gonna spend that first day figuring out who's the boss in the barn. And she just gets to pick where she wants to eat and the other cows give her her space. She usually pick, figures out which is her favorite stall and the other cows know not to take it. And there isn't a whole lot of fighting. You don't see them like banging their heads together, but you sometimes see them do kind of to, to scruff up a little bit, but not any worse than you would see kids on a playground playing sports. All right. We're getting a lot of questions like, when they get older, do they ever go back with their mother cows? Well, so two years from now, all these babies you see are going to be full grown, right? So they're going to be having babies of their own, and then they're going to be making milk. But for the time before that, just like you go to school every day and your mom and dad and your parents and whoever goes to work every day, they kind of do their own thing. So I make sure these babies are well taken care of. Uh, but when they're older, they can be back in the pens together. Um, I have never seen a mom and a baby recognize each other or like just would need to be back together. Their family, they think of their family as anybody that's with them. They kind of think of me as their family. I'm, I'm a cow to them. The people that they, that they trust and take care of are the animals that they're around. So, so whether it's another cow that's not even related to them or not, everybody's family. Awesome. We're getting a lot of questions. Do, you, do they get groomed? Do you wash the udders? Do they have to take baths? Can you talk a little bit about that? 
So those big long tongues are about the only bath that most of our animals ever have. They can clean themselves. They can reach the, from the, with their tongue and their teeth. They can reach all the way back to their tail and scratch themselves if they have an itch. And sometimes they'll actually use their friends to, to scratch each other. They'll, you'll sometimes watch cows scratching each other's backs in hard to reach spots. But our baby calves and our cows stay pretty clean all the time. Um, we, if we take them to the, to the county fair or to a show, where they're gonna to where they're gonna be led around, we do a lot of grooming for them. We'll clip their hair and get them all nice and pretty, just like a, a fashion model. But from a day to day basis, our cows, what you saw in our barn, that's what our cows look like every day. They don't get dirty. They stay super clean because we keep we keep our barns clean and we take care keep our take care of our animals. So they don't really need baths. Now awesome. on the other hand, they do grow their fingernails and toenails. So like just like you guys I'm sure everybody loves it when their mom or dad has to hold them down and trim their fingernails. Well, our cows have toenails and they get trimmed twice a year because their toenails never stop growing. Awesome. So we're getting a lot of questions. How do you get them to their pens? How do you move the cows around? What happens if they escape? Okay, so how do we move them around? Well, we can do it two different ways. We can put a halter on them and teach them how to lead and we can just, just like you would have put a leash on a dog and lead them to the barn, but that's a lot of work and you can only move one cow at a time. The other thing we know is that cows, once they're together in groups, they like to stick together and they also like routines. So even though our cows can't tell time, they know when it's close to them, to their time to be milked. So when we have to milk them, we just open a gate and we start to, and we, and we make a little bit of noise, just say, hey, good morning, girls. And the cows, they all say, all right, it's time to go to the milking parlor. And they all move together. And since they like to stick together, when one cow, that boss cow that we were talking about, the one that's always in charge, when she starts heading to the parlor, all the other ones follow her. And then usually my, your job when you're in there is all you do is you clean up their beds. You make their beds every three times a day. And you just make sure that nobody left behind. If there was one that maybe had, that wasn't feeling well that day and she was sleeping in, we just make sure that nobody, that nobody falls behind. And usually they all just kind of get up and they move together. So we design our barn so we have long uh, gates and fences so they just have, they know which direction to go. We don't get, let them have the opportunity to get loose. But sometimes they might get a gate open. They can cause lots of trouble. And when they get that gate open, they can run all over the place and then we have to try to herd them back in. <laughs> and usually, usually they run around for about 50 or 100 feet and they say, wow, it's muddy out here. There's nothing to eat. Let's just go back in the barn. We could. We had beds. We had water. We had feed. It was a lot comfier in there. So it's usually not too hard to get them back in once they've just decided they they, they basically want to show off and let you know that you left a gate open. How long do they sleep and rest every day? Okay, cows sleep a lot. That's that's how we know that our cows are happy. We don't want to see them hungry all the time. They basically have food in front of them all the time and they just snack all day long whenever they have a little this the slightest urge to want to get something to eat so the rest of the time if i don't see my cows at that bunk eating i want them laying down i don't want to see them just standing around with nothing to do so at any given time i bet our cows are probably laying down on average 14 hours a day and then the other 10 hours in a 24-hour day Three of them are totaled, are probably total the amount of time it takes them to go back and forth to the milking parlor and be milked. And then the other seven hours are them walking around, eating and drinking. But at least 14 hours a day, we want them laying down. So every single barn is designed so that if anybody wants to lay down, there's plenty of space for them to do it. Awesome. Where do you store the feed all year long? Okay. Hey, where do we store the feed all day long? We didn't try this out. Are you willing for me to try to see if we can catch it on camera? Let's see if we can. <laughs> All right. We don't have to move very far. You let me know if you're losing me. You're good right now. Okay. So if we look down, we can see a couple buildings and we see this big pile of something with tires on it. That is actually that haylage we were talking about. All that, all those lawn clippings. And we put it in a big pile, we pack it down, and we cover it with that plastic. That way it doesn't spoil. If any of you guys have ever left the cereal the bo your cereal box open, if you guys get your lucky charms and you forget to close up that bag, your cereal gets stale, right? Or your, or your bag of bread. You always got to seal things up when you're done eating them. 
Well, that's what we do there. We seal it up with plastic. That way it doesn't spoil. We don't want moldy food. And then we open it up and feed it to the cows. So that plastic has been keeping all that food safe. And then under the building there, you can see a big pile of stuff that's like a light yellow. That's the soybean meal. And that bin also has hay and cornmeal in it. Awesome. So we had someone make the comment, you have as many cows as there are students in their school. So to follow that up, somebody asked, why do you have so many cows? Why do we have so many cows? Well, because only two to 3% of, the, of this nation is actually working on a farm, right? So all of you people whose mom and dads aren't farmers, somebody's gotta be growing food for you guys to buy it in the grocery store, right? So a hundred years ago, maybe the farms were only about 30 or 40 cows and two or three people working on the farm because there was lots of farms all over the place and people didn't live in the cities like they do today. But as more people live in the cities and less people are working in agriculture, working on farms, making food, the rest of us that still do have to be making more food, right? Do you realize with, you know, if out of a hundred people, if only two people are making all the food in this country, that's, we have to have a bigger farm, right? And now we have beautiful big tractors. You can see all the equipment back there. We have bigger tractors that let us do more work easier. You know, a hundred years ago, even my grandparents, my, my, both my mom and my dad can remember when they, when they used horses to do the work. And that was a really long, hard work. And, they, and it took a long time to get things done. With tractors and new technology, we can do more work to grow more food easier. Awesome. We had two different questions came in that are very similar. If your cows are sick, do they get medicine and do you ever have to take them to the vet? Okay, so can you imagine trying to take a thousand pound cow and put her in the back of the car and drive her to the doctor's office? Probably is not gonna work, right? So the veterinarian, the, the, the cow doctor, actually comes to our farm. So most of the times, just like if you guys had a stomach bug or a cold and you stayed home from school because you didn't feel well, your mommy and daddy can take care of you most of the time, right? They might give you some cough medicine and things like that. But if you got really sick, you need to go to the hospital. Well, if our cows get really sick, we do need to call that doctor because it is our job to make sure all our animals stay happy and healthy. So if, awesome. we, don't ha if, if we have something where we need to take care of them, we'll call the doctors. And yes, if our calves or our cows need medicine, we're gonna give them medicine to make them better. All right, so we have, this is gonna be our final question of the day. I'm gonna group our couple together. How much farmland do you have? And we, do you grow all those crops for your cows? And do you use GMO corn? <laughs> yes. So we farm over 2,000 acres. Every cow needs about two acres of cropland to, for, to, to be used to grow the feed that they eat. And every single ingredient that I was showing you today is what we grow right here on our farm. That is what's awesome about being here in the Northeast is we have great land that we can turn into crops that we use to feed our animals. And do we use GMO corn? Yes, we do. It is very important that we try to minimize the number of pesticides and chemicals that we use on our fields because we don't want that stuff to contaminate our water. And we have found that using things that technology like GMO makes sure that our cropland is not having chemicals and insecticides put on it like the stuff that we used to use 100 years ago. Awesome. So with that, that's going to wrap up our tour today. Do you have any final words for us, Farmer Nate? No, I'm just, I'm super happy that you guys were able to join us this morning. I hope you learned something. If you have any more questions, get in touch with me. Uh, Emma will get you linked up to me. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook and all those other things. You can find our farm all over the time. Lots more pictures of baby calves. Um, but I am always happy to answer questions if you guys think of something after this video is over. Awesome. And like Nate said, if I did not get your question answered today, be sure to reach out to their farm on Facebook or Instagram or reach out to me and I can get you in touch with Nate to have your questions answered. Also, it's a really great way to follow farm life every day and see the fun things they're up to at Dutch Hollow Farm. And with that, we're going to wrap up today's tour. You will all receive the recording for the tour. So if you want to watch it again to maybe catch some information you didn't get the first time around, feel free to do that. Please also fill out the survey that comes along with that email. We're always trying to make our tours more fun and more educational for all of you. So please fill out that tour. 
And last but not least, if you enjoyed our tour and want to participate in the future, please check out our website, American Dairy Northeast backslash virtual farm tour to see our dates for the fall semester. And with that, thank you for joining everyone and have a great day.